This may be Derek Carr's biggest game of his career, and I have no doubt in my mind, Derek Carr's gonna get it done on Sunday, and the Raiders will be in the playoffs. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Sanji, back at it with another video. Before we get into it, hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Let's get into this. Derek Carr, let's face it, is looking at two different directions right now. He is looking at the direction of, is he going to be the Raiders quarterback? Is he not going to be the Raiders quarterback? As you guys know, the Las Vegas Raiders are going into the final game of the season. This game has playoff implications for both the Raiders and the Chargers. Sunday night game, primetime football. Derek Carr is 11 of 11 on primetime games. 11 wins, 11 losses, and I think this one may be the biggest one. If Derek Carr can get the Raiders into the playoffs, he may lock himself as the future quarterback of the Raiders as opposed to if he doesn't, if he has a bad game and we're not able to beat the Chargers, he may not be the Raiders quarterback next year. There's nothing that guarantees that Derek Carr will be the quarterback, but this game right here could be that, that one game that determines his future. We're going to discuss that plus more a little bit later on, but first and foremost, I kind of want to get into the game and what it means for the Raiders to be able to get into the playoffs. As you guys know, the Raiders haven't made the playoffs in so many years, or they've had so much so much non-success in so many years. Uh, and they had one good year, which was 2016. They made the playoffs, but the Raiders lost uh, in the first round because Derek Carr ended up getting hurt. Now, obviously that was a well-constructed team, but I can argue that this team is better than that team, right? It's better constructed, specifically on the defense side of the ball. If you look at how our defense has been playing the past six to seven weeks, we're a top 10 defense in terms of points per game, specifically allowed by the defense. The Raiders defense has been very good down the stretch, and it almost seems like Gus Bradley's kind of saved up what he planned to do for this part of the season. Instead of showing his entire defense early on, it seems like he kind of saved the game plans, the, 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 the stuff that is really going to allow the Raiders to win. He saved those type of blitzes and packages until the end of the year, and it's really showing. Uh, you give up literally three points against the Broncos on the defense side of the ball. You hold a, a top five Colts team that scores 27 points a game. You, you hold them to only 20 points. That too, most of that damage came on two drives. And then you look at the Browns game, obviously they had a backup quarterback, but you shut down Nick Chubb for the most part, right? The Raiders defense has really been getting it done. And that right there is what has allowed the Raiders to win, right? Having a good defense has allowed the Raiders offense to be consistent, balanced, productive, and win games, right? We're not only reliant on Derek Carr. Like it's not only up to Derek Carr to get the wins. Sure, it's nice to have him be able to put up 30 points, but when he's not able to do that, uh, it's nice to have the defense back him up and actually be able to win some games. Now, obviously in this game, uh, the Raiders take on the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. It was flexed into prime time. And Derek Carr right now, if he's able to get the Raiders in the playoffs, some people are saying he might get some MVP votes. Now, I don't know if that uh, essentially puts him into the MVP conversation. Uh, he does. He is top five in passing yards. Uh, but at the same time, the Raiders have been clicking, right? Zay Jones, 120 yards this past week. Hunter Renfro has almost 600 yards in the past three to four weeks. You look at the production that these guys have been giving Derek Carr. At the same time, look at the production Derek Carr is having without Darren Waller, his top playmaker. And we're going to get him back this week, right? He practiced on a limited basis yesterday. Uh, today, we'll kind of see what happens. If he practices, uh, he has a chance to actually play. The biggest game of the season for the Raiders, the biggest game over the past 20 years for the Raiders is today. And if Darren Waller does not play, I'd be very disappointed. I think he will play. Uh, Derek Carr, let's let's talk about his future. Let's talk about how, how, why he's not guaranteed to be a Raiders quarterback. Uh, as you guys know, the Raiders have put eight years into Derek Carr. Uh, most quarterbacks don't get eight years, especially quarterbacks that haven't won a lot, right? You look at Matthew Stafford and the fact that the Lions gave up on him, right? They tr essentially traded him for multiple first-round picks. Uh, you look at a guy like Baker Mayfield, who's just been in the league for three, four years, and the Browns apparently are about to move on from Baker Mayfield, right? You give him four years, if he's not it, if he doesn't get it done, you move on. Now, obviously, Derek Carr is a little bit different. Derek Carr is a really good thrower of the football. He's really accurate. He knows how to deliver the ball downfield. Uh, those are some things that some of these other quarterbacks may not have. But uh, teams, if you're not able to win with the quarterback you have, typically like to reset their franchise every four to five years. The Raiders did not do that. They waited much longer. Now, you can also kind of make that argument that uh, right before John Gruden, uh, Derek Carr was in year four or five. 
and John Gruden kind of decided to stick with Derek Carr for the past four seasons. Uh, so you can almost make the argument that it was John Gruden that really kept Derek Carr around. And if it's a different coach, if Gus Bradley somehow gets the head coaching job, he may keep Derek Carr around, right? He's kind of familiar with him. But if it's Jim Harbaugh who ends up coming to the Raiders and being their coach, as reports have stated, among some other guys, they may not stick with Derek, right? They may say, hey, we'd rather have a guy that's mobile, a guy that can extend plays, a guy that can make plays with his legs, and they may go out and get someone else. As opposed to, uh, you know, if it feels John Gruden being brought in or if, you know, Gus Bradley stays the coach or if it's uh, Rich Pisacci that continues uh, to have success with the Raiders, right? You make the playoffs, win one or two games, Rich Pisacci may just be the next head coach. If you guys think about it, if Pisacci is the head coach, he may just keep Derek Carr. So uh, there's a lot that goes into it with just the fact that depending on the head coach, Derek may or may not be here. On top of that, if Derek wins today, uh, on Sunday and then he wins in the, in the playoffs, he boosts his chance that much more for that extension of a contract. Now, here, here's the alternative, right? If the Raiders don't keep Derek Carr, you have to think about what what do you gain from not keeping Derek Carr, right? And the really the only thing you would gain if is one you can trade him for picks. Uh, the Lions traded Matt Stafford, I believe, for a first and a second, or maybe it's multiple first round picks. The Raiders could potentially trade Derek for multiple picks. At the same time, you would also save about $40 million in cap, right? And not, that's not what Derek's making today or next year, but that's what he's going to want on his next contract. Uh, some people have stated Derek will take $25 million, and that's not the case. Derek Carr is not going to take $25 million, right? It's just not going to happen. Derek Carr, if he considers himself a top five quarterback, which I'm sure he does, he's not going to settle for bottom 15 money. It's not going to happen. Uh, there's a reason why Aaron Rodgers is the highest paid quarterback. There's a reason why Patrick Mahomes is the second highest paid quarterback, right? These guys know what their worth is, and I know Derek Carr knows what his worth is, or at least he has his opinion of what his worth is. And... If the Raiders get rid of him, you would save whatever that amount might be, right? Whatever Derek Carr believes he's worth, the Raiders will save that. So you may be able to spend that money on another uh, defensive tackle or a corner or a safety or an offensive lineman or a wide receiver. And essentially, you'd have to find that next quarterback, whether it's a rookie or rather it's a backup that may be in the league somewhere or a guy that is no longer wanting to be with the current team. Right? Deshaun Watson is an example. Russell uh, Wilson. Some people have said Aaron Rodgers, although I personally don't think Aaron Rodgers is going anywhere. There's some quarterbacks out there at the same time. You really have to think. Uh, Derek Carr could, instead of you know going into the offseason and the Raider Nation, the GM's kind of hesitant, instead of all of that being talked about, Derek Carr could go out against the Chargers, put up 35 points, go into the first week of the playoffs, put up 30 points, and the Raiders would be talking about a completely different scenario. They'd be talking about how soon is Derek Carr going to get his contract extension. And that is literally what we may be talking about if Derek Carr gets it done against the Chargers. This is Derek Carr's biggest game of his career. I have no doubt in my mind that Derek Carr is going to get it done. Let me know what you guys think. Hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.